cyber crime industry is way bigger than the cyber security industry. Let me explain. Cyber security industry is a 180 billion dollar industry, whereas the cyber crime industry is more than 6 trillion. This is equivalent to the GDP of Australia, Canada, Brazil and South Korea all put together or the equivalent worth of Google, Amazon, Facebook and Apple. The one guarding the internet, the good guys, the white hats, on the other side the bad guys, the black hats, the hackers. This shows that people are not assets, only good people are assets. The world of hacker consists of people who write and sell exploits in the dark web for as less as $50 and all these transactions are also very anonymous because of Bitcoin. In fact, there is a very popular hacker joke. Where did the hackers go? I don't know. They ran somewhere. Every single day, half a million malware is written in the dark web. In fact, most of the dark web forums have become the Alibaba and Amazon of the cyber crime industry. To fight big wars, you need to have deep pockets. And with all these statistics, you clearly know who's winning. But I feel Intellectual capital will always trump financial capital. Let me explain. If you see the top three nations in terms of cyber attack traffic, that will be United States, China and Russia. The cyber investment by all these nations is enormous, but still they get hacked every single day. Not only nations, even corporations. See some of the top hacks, 2013 Yahoo attack where 3 billion user accounts were compromised. 2016, Mirai IoT botnet attack, which was DDoS-based. 2017, WannaCry ransomware attack. If you see all these attack patterns, you'll understand that defending all the time is not easy. There has to be a better strategy. Before we get into the solution zone, let's try to understand what this world of hackers look like. That's how they look like. Christopher Von Hassel, the world's youngest hacker, at the age of five, he broke into Microsoft Xbox security. Ruben Paul, at the age of nine, he had his own cyber security firm. Well, I wonder if kids can do this. What about the experts? Well, two more stats. See the world average of hacker. It's 25 years old. And most patents awarded to people are below 26 years. Common denominator, youth. A child grows to curiosity and so does hacker. And curiosity is a never ending game. Be finding the depth of ocean or reaching Mars. What starts off as a computer hobby turns into unethical hacking. And that's where the problem begins. Even if you see the world's most famous hacker, Kevin Mitnick, in his childhood days, he was drawn by the world of magic. Again, common denominator, curiosity. I think there are only three reasons why hackers do what they do. Money, fame, hacktivism. If you see some of the hacker lifestyle, swanky cars, multi-million mansion, who would want to give it up at a very young age? Some hacker groups hack into rival hacking groups and post their credentials in the dark web. Gives them fame in their hacker community. A few Money is not a motivation, ideology is. This hacktivist group hack into government websites and post their credentials and uh, messages all out in public. Or they give access to citizens to government censored websites. Anonymous is one of the hacktivist group known. I think the world needs a technology where even if a slight evil idea comes into anyone's mind, the keyboards should get logged and the screen should get blacked out. Well, sharing some startup ideas, you see. Well, now that we understand the cyber world, can we ever be one step ahead of this hacker's game? Well, there are no silver bullets, but definitely a solution approach. I propose a three-prong approach. Software coders, government, schools, universities, and social awareness. Let's start with software programmers. Software coders are the heart of every application that is built today. Software coders build the code, but don't imagine how it can be misused. 
So the question is, can every code be trusted? Because even a bad code can function. Hence, I propose a campaign that should be run in MNCs, government institutions, schools, which says, secure everything you build. Coders need to write defect-free software. And this depends on the quality of professors. It depends on the quality of schooling system. And this vicious cycle needs to be fixed first. See, if you're an atheist, you need to know what is religion, right? So if you want to be a good hacker, you need to know how a bad hacker thinks. Because even a bad hacker thinks like a coder first. In a way, one can argue that the bad hackers keep you at check because that will help you get a good software code. I met Vitalik Buterin in May 2017 in India, who is the inventor of open source blockchain Ethereum, who brought in a concept of smart contracts. We had some deep conversation about the future of blockchain. He said, every new version of software that comes in disrupts the earlier version to bring a better product. This is how evolution will happen. Made me think, why not all the software coders open source their product in the world and tell everyone to break their code. This will bring in good coding practice, not just coding. See, softwares will become smarter and the day they become self-learning, it will be very difficult to control them. So the focus should be on upskilling the resources. In cybersecurity alone, 4 million jobs are still vacant because of lack of quality resource. The second pillar, government, universities, schools. I think the real education happens once you leave universities and school. And the problem is when you leave schools and university and join the corporate world, you are bound by policy regulations and you end up doing only ethical penetration testing. On the other side, hackers are independent, free and available as hackers for higher program in the dark web. Most of them also offer 24 by 7 support. Can you believe that? So the question is, why in schools ethical hacking is not taught? Schools should focus on the difference between cyber legal and illegal. Schools should teach uh, students critical thinking and logical reasoning. This will help them identify vulnerabilities when they reach the corporate world. Establishments should penalize as well as incentivize for effective measures. Three initiatives can be done. We need more of bug bounty programs and hackathons. This is the best economic incentive that can be offered. This can drive two purposes. Okay? At least make sure the good ones don't join the bad hacker. And since the bug bounty programs are lucrative, at least it can entice the bad hackers to come on this side. Some of the bug bounty programs offer a million dollar in reward. Programs like uh, Tesla and Facebook bug bounty programs are quite popular. We need more of ethical hacking schools in the world. This is the best educational incentive that can be offered to students who want to take cyber security as an elective. Why not have something called as cyber credit rating in the world? Citizens can be rewarded for good cyber behavior in the internet. We need to also penalize for accountability sake. And this can be done through regulations. See, jurisdiction of cyber attack is very difficult to find because Hackers operating in multiple countries keep hopping in different regions. Laws can fix this. Successful laws like GDPR in the European Union has shown that you know, regulations can be outcome driven. We need more of these regulations. We need more replications of models of Estonia and Israel. If you see models like Israel, they are far ahead in cyber security. Some of the initiatives like after school cyber program is superb. See, I've spent a lot of uh, time in cybersecurity space in various continents, and I still see most of the critical government institutions using outdated softwares. There's an immediate need to modernize the infrastructure and also plan to 
de-risk the core business. 15 years back, I did a course on cryptography and network security under Professor Bernard Menezes. And those year, days, we used to calculate the number of years it will take to crack algorithms like RSA, AES. Two years back, I met Professor again. He was so happy to tell me that he and his team has cracked the AES algorithm. Such a proud moment for me. Made me think, quantum computing will disrupt encryption. And when it gets commercialized and it falls into the rank, uh, wrong hands, it will be very difficult to control the hacker's world. The question is, can we write better quantum encryption? The third pillar, social awareness. I think people need to understand that surveillance is the business model of the internet. This will help them accept the risk way before they go to the internet. Social media manipulation to influence buying behavior and influence election is well known. We know case of Cambridge Analytica. Most of the mobile games and uh, deep fake apps might have malware in it. So be very sure of what you download from, from the internet. See, cyber security is taken as a very complicated subject. So why not bring in gamification into the space to add a little bit of fun element so that Awareness spreads in the masses. See, by 2030, 50 billion devices will be connected through IoT, Internet of Things. In fact, Internet of Things will be way bigger than the oil economy. And when the whole world gets connected, it will be very difficult to digitize trust. I met Bruce Shiner, the technology expert of cyber security. I met him in uh, Paris in November 2013 for the ISF World Congress. I asked him, is IoT the real threat to the world? And mind you, this was way before the Mirai IoT attack. He told me when the world is connected through devices, two things will happen. The world will change both economically as well as socially. Maybe think, Imagine this, you get up in the morning and your fridge tells you transfer $500 if you want to unlock me. Or the car that you are driving is controlled by AI bot and accidents happen and someone dies. See, there will be elements of hacking in every part of your life in coming years. The only proactive strategy is to have a security mindset. Security should be in your DNA. This is the only way to deal with hackers. And hence I propose this cyber movement which propagates this idea of proactive security strategy. The benefits of this initiative is far utilitarian. Because imagine if you run this campaign in schools due to students, the parents get educated and hence mother. And we all know once women do better, economies do better. And forget about my mother clicking into certain email phishing links. Even corporate employees do it. So this problem is absolutely deep rooted. You need to tell everyone that, you know, never trust, always verify. Do you really want to connect to any free public Wi-Fi? Think about it. I hope this three-pronged approach is debated and celebrated and discussed everywhere in the society. Because it's about debating and celebrating differences. Of all my experience in the cybersecurity world, I've realized that cybersecurity is a shared responsibility. Private public partnership, along with responsible institutions like ITU and ICANN, all coming together can fight this evil. Else, they will keep controlling you for the rest of your life. See, today, 60% of the world is an in internet. When the remaining 40% comes in the internet and the world becomes completely digital, only a good hacker can save the world. See, you don't need to manufacture missiles if there are no wars. So if no wars are influenced, you don't need to sell the machinery. Because guns don't hurt people. 
people hurt people? Well, I think we all need to think like a hacker to be one step ahead of the game. We need to think counterintuitive. Only by thinking like a hacker, you can not only be a good programmer, but you can also have a good security mindset to change humanity. And thinking like a hacker is like playing chess. You have to anticipate the opponent's move way before. Because if you're predictable, you can be defeated. Lastly, we are debating quantum computing today. Tomorrow there will be some other technology which will disrupt quantum computing. So there is no winning this technological war. The only way to beat this is by having a strong security mindset. Because hackers hack people, not technology. Thank you.